you said before the game that Memphis was a tougher opponent than its record might indicate, and you expected a tough, close game. Right. You got it. Double overtime. Overall thoughts about your team's performance and how you ended up grinding out a win. Right. Yeah, it was a good game. Um, you know, I thought that Memphis would sit deep and try to catch us on the counter um, and thought they'd be, you know, respect our ability to keep the ball and try to break them down, and they were effective at what they did. You know, we created hit the bar twice, uh, hit the bar and hit the post. Um, so created a decent number of chances and also had a few other good ones. But, um, you know, they were very well organized and they sat deep and had a couple chances on a break. But, you know, I thought that we moved the ball well. I thought, I was hoping it was just a matter of time until the result would come. But um, give credit to, to Memphis and the way they set up and gave us a bit of trouble. Memphis had an edge in shots in the first half and obviously that turned in the second half. What adjustments did you make at the intermission there? No, I mean, there's no real magic at the intermission. It was just continue to tell the guys our ways to uh, to get out and break them down when they were sitting so deep, what players we needed to commit forward and the movements we needed to make in the final third to kind of manipulate some of their, uh, some of their backs and create some space in wide areas and behind. But um, no, I mean, the, we were fine at halftime. We had all the ball. We had all the ball in the second half again, so it's just a matter of continuing to create chances and waiting for one to fall. You look pretty animated talking to your team before overtime. Anything different in your message, or was that mostly just encouragement no, to keep playing? No, it's just encouragement. You know, I thought that they were tiring. They didn't sub as much as, as we did, and I thought we were a bit deeper, and, you know, I thought we had our foot on the game as a matter of finding the, uh, you know, the right moment. So it took us 103 minutes in order to find the winner, but... It's a fair result. All right, you get the winner from Mauro Cicero. From your perspective on the bench, what did you see on that play, the way that unfolded? Talon drove a long ball in the box. Mao drifted for our, you know, we put in uh, Christian Borum and Colton Haviker to start the second overtime because I thought they'd give us a, a bit of energy for five minutes. Um, you know, Colton drifted high. The ball was played in him. I thought the goalkeeper, you know, was into the wind, so I thought the goalkeeper wandered a little too far, and it was right at the edge of the box, and... And punched it low, and I was in a good spot to chip it over. One of the adjustments that came about during the game, Jordan Cano left, right. and so you got younger on defense. Sure. Uh, Talon Maples played in the middle. Philip Ponder played in the middle. All right, you didn't get younger. Garrett Welch came in as well. But right. what did you think of the way those young guys quarterbacked the defense? Yeah, I thought, you know, we brought Garrett off the bench, and Garrett was, you know, he's always ready for that moment. You know, he's a player worthy of starting for this program he just needs his opportunity and you know when he's called on we expect Garrett to be prepared for for those chances and he was called on tonight and performed very very well uh, you know we slid Talon in the middle and Philip to you know Philip stayed at uh, at right center half and you know those guys continue to get better the, the game was tailored made for them to bring the ball forward because they wouldn't release players to to defend high on our center back, so they were on the ball a ton. I think when we look at their passing numbers, they'll be through the roof. So, um, no, I mean those guys—they're comfortable on the ball. They're, they can facilitate play for us, and you know the opportunity came for Town to put the ball in a dangerous spot, and he did. For the second time in a couple of weeks now, you're going to have a non-conference game stuck in the middle of the right. conference portion of your schedule. Given the intensity of tonight and going to overtime, any worry about, or how do you guard against? hangover or, or let down uh, against a non-conference opponent? Always, it's always a concern for a coach. I, I think these guys have it, you know, well prepared in their minds about how they're going to approach each game. You know, I think it's for the staff to worry about complacency, but um, I'm proud of the way they perform every night and they just come out and do their job. And I think we have a group that's pretty mature and, and professional in their approach and they will come out on Tuesday night and they will do their job and you know Oral Roberts will be a good opponent um, you know, there'll be a challenging game but we will approach it as we do any game with the intention to put out our best players and win the game.